Welcome to the big long proof of soundness in propositional logic. Today we're going to prove that if gamma proves alpha, then gamma entails alpha. So there's a lot of things we have to do. Basically what we're saying is that hey, if it's true on uh, this kth step that it's that uh, gamma entails alpha, then if we have a proof of the next step, then it entails the next step, and it's the crazy thing we're gonna do. So, base case, um, we're going to show that gamma i proves some alpha i, and this shouldn't be an i, this should be a one, which means that the first line entails the first sentence. So, when is this true? Well, let's just assume that, hey, if we have alpha one, then we can prove alpha 1, and that's what we can do. We can just say somewhere in this gamma 1 is alpha 1. And if we have alpha 1, then we know alpha 1 always entails itself, since everything entails itself or proves itself. So there's the base case, which we can say that if alpha 1 proves alpha 1, then alpha 1 entails alpha 1. Okay, inductive step. What we want to do is we're going to assume that for any step in our proof and every step before that step, the set of sentences gamma k proves some sentence alpha k. And then what we want to do is we want to show that gamma k plus 1 entails alpha k plus 1. And we're going to do that by some syntax proofs to show that this is true. So there are 11 cases we have to consider. Yes, we have to do this for every rule to show that it's true. Case number one, it's an assumption. So what we have is we have on this proof line, we have k plus one and alpha one. And if it's an assumption, then we know that it's in the set of premises, so it's in gamma, therefore we can put it on any line. This is a rule we have, it's an assumption we can put it on any line. So in this case, of course, if we have alpha here, and we're, we're going to call this alpha k plus 1. I might write some other things here, but it's just going to be some random formula. We don't know what the formula is, so whatever we can get there, we'll just write it as alpha k plus 1, since alpha k plus 1 could equal p and q or r arrow p. We have no idea what it is. It could be anything. So whatever we get here, we're just going to write as alpha k plus 1. So we know that, well, t k plus 1 entails alpha k plus 1 because it's a premise, so we can put it down. There we go. Reiteration. So there we have k plus one line, and we have earlier in the proof, we have some line k where we have alpha down, and later we can write alpha again through reiteration from line h, and this is going to be equal to the line alpha k plus one. So this is valid because we can reiterate anytime we want. So if some step, let's say some step h entails alpha, alpha, then sometime later, well, that same step at k, so we'll call it gamma k, it's the exact same thing, is going to prove it at that step. In fact, what we should say here is that if gamma proves alpha h, it also proves alpha k plus 1, because it's a reiteration. Okay, case number 3 and introduction. If we have two lines, i and j, that have, say, p and q, at line k plus 1, we can get p and q. That is totally okay. And we know this preserves truth validity since we're assuming everything above k plus 1 is true. So 
we have this is going to be our alpha k plus 1 in this scenario. And this is going to be from i, j, and, and introduction. So this is going to be okay. Because we know that gamma i entails p and gamma j entails q. Therefore, our gamma k plus 1 is going to entail p and q, which we're just going to call alpha k plus 1. And I'm going to start leaving out this stuff right here, but this is part of the proof for every single one. But I believe it's really easy just to translate these. Basically, just put a gamma in each one, and then at the end of the line, you just equal alpha k plus 1. It's all good. So, and elimination. Uh, we do have to consider two scenarios for this. We have i and j, and we have another i and j here. So, if we have p and q, we can get p, and if we have p and q, we can also get q. And these are going to be our alpha k plus 1s on this line, and this should not be j. This should be line k plus 1, line k plus 1. In fact, if we wanted to be really rigorous, we could say that this right here was line k, but this is not necessary. So it doesn't have to be one step afterwards. It can be anywhere. That's why we don't pick k. We pick some other letter j, because it could be anywhere. And of course, these are all valid by our rules um, and delimination on line j. So these are also completely acceptable. And once again, same thing applies. Case 5, or introduction. If on line j we have p, then on line k plus 1 we can have p or q. And this is line j from or introduction. And of course, this is going to be equal to our alpha k plus 1. So we have entailment there. Modus ponens, we have p and p arrow q. Then on some other line, k plus 1, we can get q. And again, fairly intuitive. So this would be lines i, j, modus ponens, and this is going to equal alpha k plus 1. And you can see when I introduce proofs, I use these letterings and these numberings just so sort of as a precursor to this, to this little proof system we have here. So this is good. And of course, a way you can do this in a semantic way is you can say, okay, well, the, the truth value at p is equal 1, and the truth value of p arrow q is equal to 1. Therefore, the truth value of q is equal to 1. And this is a uh, semantic proof, and this is sort of the same thing as saying, well, Gamma i proves p, and gamma j proves p arrow q. This is a different notation for it, so that is also fine. So modus ponens is done, or introduction is done. Let's move on to some harder ones, by conditional elimination. Actually, it's not harder. Okay, we have p, I should be consistent with myself, I keep switching myself, and we have two lines, i and j, p by conditional q, and p, then we can get q on line k plus 1, and this is alpha k plus 1, and of course this is through i, j, by conditional elimination, and of course if this was not p, you'd get not q, and if this was q, you would get p, and if it was not q, you'd get not p. You have to kind of actually write out all four scenarios, so if you're doing a proof, you have to write out all four. So have fun with that. I'm not doing that. Conditional proof. If we have some line P and we get some line Q on I and J, then we can claim on line K plus one a P arrow Q. And this is from I. This is actually from I to J CP. And of course, as always, it's our alpha k plus 1 right here. So we have entailment here. Case 9, reductio ad absurdum. 
if we have A and we prove B and we prove not B, then we're going to get not A. So this will be K plus 1, J, I, ooh, crap, I need another letter here. Let's use G. G is a good one. And this would be from G, I, J, and R, A, A. And of course, this is our alpha K plus 1 on the bottom here. By conditional introduction. Okay, this is one that we saw earlier as a way to show you what to do. In fact, you know what? By conditional introduction, I'm actually going to leave this one as an exercise because... I've been doing all of these, and I think this one, you can handle on your own. So go ahead and try it. See if you can do it. If not, uh, answers are everywhere online. So, I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably want a verbal explanation, but you can check your answer online. Uh, Wikipedia, it's really good. has natural deductive proofs everywhere. So check this one out on your own. And I'll do the last case, or elimination, because this is a pain. So, if we have A on our line here, and we open a subproof, sorry, this should be A or B, and we do A and we prove C, and we get B and we prove C, then we can claim C on line K plus 1. So, J, I, G, F, and E. So, this is huge. So, this is going to be our alpha K plus 1. And this is going to be from E, F to G, I to J, or elimination. So, once again, we could do the, well, gamma E entails A or B, and gamma F entails A, and gamma, that's an F, gamma G, would entail C. So actually what we can do is we can write gamma G plus 1 entails A arrow C if we really care to do that, but it's not necessary. And then you go so on and so forth until you find that gamma K plus 1 entails C. But this is actually the same thing as alpha K plus 1. And therefore, we have considered all 11 cases, so we get a big fat square there, and it's over. It's over. That's soundness. Uh, you have to prove all 11 cases, and, you know, there's a lot more words in books, but I tried to do this so we can translate it this very easily into a language that you guys are more comfortable with, and the uh, whole idea of the proof is more of the conceptual part. I'm trying to pass on the conceptualness of the, tr of the proof to you guys so you can reproduce it on your own and get a better understanding of what's going on. So that's how you prove it. Um, you can see there's a lot of cases here, so I'm going to do this slide impromptu. Uh, there's a lot of scenarios where you have an axiomatic system that has a much easier soundness proof. And I'll write this soundness much easier. And the question is, why is this easier? Because in this system, this axiomatic system you have, uh, there's tons of different axiomatic systems, but a good way to do it is you have, well, you have two connectives. And you say, what do you mean we have two connectives? Well, you have the arrow and you have negation, and that's it. So you only have to prove soundness for these two operations, and that's it. In fact, all you can do really is you can never have premises. So they simplify it by saying, oh, hey, well, there's no premises. And then you say, what do you mean, no premises? And then you say, well, this whole system actually only has three theorems in it. And, well, these three theorems, they prove everything. So what you do is you just solve soundness for these two connectives, and it's over. So... This is the advantage of an axiomatic system over a natural deductive system. So, you're wondering, well, how do we represent things with, you know, our lovely connectives and an or? Well, we give them definitions. So, P or Q would be not P arrow Q. 
and we just substitute it, but we don't have rules for this. We don't have any rules for that. We only have rules for the arrow, which is modus ponens. And that's it. So there's an impromptu look at axiomatic systems. That was soundness. Uh, I guess next is completeness. That's always fun. So I'll see you then.